<laughs> Hi everyone, Peter Lissiaga here, Master Shook of Donato Karate Sense. I hope you guys are having a great day. I'm here with my daughter, Alexandra Lissiaga. Miss Lissiaga. Hey, hey, Alexandra, thanks for hooking up with me today. Yeah. <laughs> I know you're enjoying your day because I all yeah. kids went back to school today, but you're a couple of years out of school. You're full-time yeah. instructor. So tell everyone uh what you're doing now. Okay, so right now I teach full-time at Donata Karate Center. Um, I teach mostly the Little Champions program. I love it. I'm there every day. And then at home, I'm just reaching out and contacting our students, keeping in touch with them. Well, what do you like most about teaching at Donato Karate? Um, it's just a lot of fun. I guess I like meeting all of the kids and the parents and working with them and helping them get better. And it's it's just so much fun to work with them. Well, you're, you're pretty awesome. Everyone loves you. And <clears throat> we have some students. We have some uh kids in our community that try our martial arts programs. We have an introduction program. Hey guys, you want to find out more about our program, go to DonatoKarate.com. I can't help but plug it. But anyway, we have people coming in and many of the kids that come in want to join our program because of Miss Lisiaga. They just love yeah. her energy and she's just great with the kids. But hey, the reason why I want uh, Alexandra and I to come on, on uh, live is to talk about back to school we have kids going back to school this week and alexandra has uh, i'll call her alexandra but you students you need to call her miss lisiaga do not change that she's my daughter and i call her alexandra she calls me dad <laughs> yeah <laughs> and so uh, but we're going to talk about back to school and so uh alexandra has some tips for you guys that she's yeah. she'll just just uh just throw at you off the top of her head she's been you know it's been many decades since i've been in school so i have no idea what it's like to go back to school but yeah. alexandra does and so um uh, let me first start off everyone this is going to be for students of all ages and all grades and this yeah. is for parents as well and so I want to start this off, Alexandra, by just simply telling everyone that I know that life is tough. Now, I enjoy life and I work hard to enjoy life. We all work hard to enjoy life, but life can be tough. Life is tough. Working for a living is tough and school is tough. It's all tough. But, but what does all this tell us? What this tells us is that we have two choices. We can either get tougher or allow the, the toughness of life, of school, of work, of weaken us and tear us down. I'm the kind, that's what martial arts is so important to me. And I can see this happening in Alexandra's life, that she, when things get tough, she rises up. She is a warrior and we are warriors. So the mm -hmm. one thing we can do is just simply get tougher. And so we're gonna talk about discipline. And uh, Mrs. Siaga, tell everyone what we teach our students at Donato Karate, what discipline is okay so we start with the three and four year olds but this applies to everybody discipline is just doing what you need to do especially when you don't feel like it and when you don't want to do something when you're tired or you'd rather be doing something else it's doing it anyway that's what discipline is yeah and i think a lot of people think that uh that you have to go somewhere to get discipline but it's a choice it's a choice so you can be tired exhausted you can be overwhelmed but you're, the power is, is in the choice. When you say, you know what, so what, I'm going to do what I got to do regardless of how I feel. That yeah. discipline, I think many people get confused on that. So so you've been imp implementing your discipline. How's that working yeah. out for you? <laughs> um, pretty good. I mean, I can always get better with it, but it's pretty good because I know that there's things I need to get done during the day. And I'm not in school or working during the morning, really. So I have to make sure I do the things I have to do and not get lazy and just sit and not do anything all day. So that's where the discipline comes in for me. So that the whole day I'm doing something productive. That's what I'm working for. Right. Well, well, you seem to have, let's say, a, a, like a, a like a dream life. <laughs> because right now no. people are going to school and then people are getting these full-time jobs. Your job... Yeah. Basically, it's almost like, a, a, well, it's in the afternoon, the, the, the yeah. early to late afternoon to the evening. Yeah. And that's when you have to go because you have to squeeze in in those hours a lot of energy. So what is it like for you? Uh, and parents, trust me, we, and students, we're definitely going to give you guys some ideas for going back to school. But just give you an idea of uh, um, Miss Lisiaga. So what's the 
the, the greatest challenge for you in that time you have to put all that energy in that time so what's the greatest challenge for you uh working in uh at, as a martial arts instructor um probably like getting up even though i don't have to early in the morning all the time because sometimes i will so i have to make sure that when i do have to wake up early in the morning that i can because since i'm not in school anymore i don't have to anymore but um it does get tough sometimes to wake up because the day will fly by sometimes or most of the time it flies by so everything that i have to do during the day i have to remember that i do still have to get up early enough because the day will fly by before i know it i have to go to work yeah so, i mean it's so like you yeah. have a, you have a new normal life right now mm -hmm. it's a new normal yeah it's very unique and i think it's just awesome you do it you're doing a great job thank you uh you're doing great <laughs> so let's talk let's talk about some tips for kids because yeah because a lot of yeah. parents and a lot of kids are now have to get up early, especially the kids, because they, yeah. you know, in the summertime, they were sleeping in late and yeah. we can continue. I choose to get up early. That's my, that's my mm -hmm. normal. And you have a couple of students now who get up early because of you who wake up early in the morning. Is, yeah. is it really? Yes. Yeah, so I wake up at 430 now. Wow. That's good. Yeah. I didn't know that. We started in the summer. That's yeah. very cool. That is so cool. Mm -hmm. But so now kids have to get up because they got to go to school. Yes. So what are some tips? What are some suggestions you would have for them when they got if they when they got to get up? Um, I remember getting up early in the morning. It was tough. Um, I would say I had a habit of not eating breakfast as the years went on, like especially in high school. And I felt that I was really tired. and I was really hungry by like two hours later, like once I got to school. So I know everybody always says it, but definitely eat breakfast or bring something with you for on the bus or like in your first class, whatever you can do. And um, I would say what I would do when I first had to wake up is I'd wash my face with cold water, like I splash it so I could wake up a little bit and setting multiple alarms or like setting your, like what I would do is I have an alarm clock. Now I have my phone that I can use, but I had an alarm clock. And what I started doing because I got in the habit of shutting it off because it was right there is I would put it across the room. So I had to get up and turn it off. And then mostly I'd probably, I'd be awake after that. Um, so yeah, like in the morning, setting up things that you could wake yourself up, like with the alarm and right. then with like, make sure you definitely do wash your face and wash up. Cause that'll wake you up too. If you just roll out of bed and go into school, then, right. you know, and change your outfit. Don't wear pajamas to school. Like, I wear pajamas well, school a lot. Well, let me let me add yeah. let me add this getting up morning thing. Let me for the parents as well. Parents, a uh, tip for you for you guys. What I did as a parent is I wanted to make sure, especially when uh, when Alexandra and now Christian, now Christian's in in high school. He's in he's in tenth grade now. And so what I did with Alexandra is that I really allowed her to be responsible for getting up. I know uh, as a parent, I think that's a great tip that for parents out there, as early as possible, give the responsibility of getting up to your child. Help them figure out what works for them. Alexandra explained to you what works for her. And it wasn't 100% perfect. There were times, and this is where the tip for the parent comes in is be prepared to be up. I made it made sure because I made sure I'm, I'm up all the time and I, mm -hmm. I am aware of the time and I'll listen for Alexandra and now Christian to make sure they're getting up. And uh, I won't be their alarm clock, but what I do do is that if I know that they miss their time, I would, I would make sure that I get them up and I won't. Okay. And sometimes I'll wait till they have maybe 20 minutes to go because then they have to rush this way. They get a, they get the lesson that oh my gosh they didn't wake up and they're going to be late because they didn't wake up and make sure we do not train our children to think that it's our responsibility to, to wake them up we have to train them so that they can get themselves up and alexander does a great job and like me we're not perfect but as a team because we're all together as a team we help each other out and i know uh, if she was up and i had to get up and i was running behind she would help me why because that's what i would do for her as well so yeah. getting up make sure you get the alarm clock in there I, uh, the washing of the face that's what i do i put cold water on my face and then i what i also do is i drink a lot of water i think drink 16 ounces of water right away and so so yeah and uh i get ready as soon as possible and get to work so what else what else uh tips do you have for kids going back to school um like with the morning or like anything in general well in general i think let's stick to the morning okay. the morning is i think perfect okay. getting back to school yeah that is important 
Um, I would say figure out the time that's perfect for you to wake up. Um, I know that that'll change too, like over the years, depending on what time your school starts and then what grade you're in, like middle school will be different than high school. And then also depending on your morning routine, like what do you want to get done in the morning? Because um, I know that in high school, I'm going to think of high school because that's what I remember the most, not really middle school at all, to be honest. But with high school, like I wake up on, in my freshman and sophomore year, my first years of high school, I like needed no sleep. I woke up at 4.30 every single day to do my hair, do my makeup. You know, I woke up way earlier than I needed to, which there's no problem with that. But then once junior and senior came, I was more tired. I had more work. I was also working, too. So I figured out the time that I needed to wake up, which wasn't really 430. So I decided I would wake up. I think it was 530. So like an hour later, because my bus came at 645. So I know personally for me, I need about an hour to get ready before school or before I go anywhere. So I gave myself an hour and like 15 minutes like to eat at the end. And so it didn't always work out. Sometimes I'd wake up at 6.20 and have 10 minutes to run to the bus stop. But um, if you know what time you have to wake up and then you do the math from there, especially for the first day of school, like everybody wants to wake up early the first day of school. So you're well rested and you have um, what you need. You have your outfit, whatever you want to do. Um, but figure out the time for you because the time your friends wake up might not be the time that you need to wake up for your routine because everybody's morning routine is totally different and you just have to figure out what the perfect one for you is so that you get enough sleep and you're able to do everything that you want to do in the morning yeah i think that's important because uh, that sets you up for the rest of your day and yeah. also when you do do that and you get ready and you're ready for school you set your day off of successful and there's nothing mm -hmm. worse than getting up late and having and getting this sense of uh, feeling like you're running behind and you're not prepared. Yeah. It's the worst. I know for me, it's the worst. And so yeah, you forget stuff. Yeah. It's, yeah. It sucks. That's no fun. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. It was a couple of times that uh, as a parent, parent, there was a couple of times where you forgot something because you were running behind and yeah. you would text, you would text me and then or, or your mom. And then we would definitely help you out if we could. Yeah. And that's what we were there. We were there to support you. So parents, that's a tip for you. Just be prepared if you can. And, you know, I had the luxury where I work out of my home and I work at DKC. And mm -hmm. so I had the luxury where I can be there for Alexandra and Christian. And same with my wife. We both work out of the home unless we we're going up to New York or we're doing other things yeah. out, out of town. But uh, I know uh, the challenge of homework and because there's a lot of, a lot of uh, considerations that students and parents and even teachers talking about this and uh, before we go into this subject i have to let everyone know that uh, i i 100 support um anything that anyone has to do to to be successful in life and regardless because it is what it is and so right now uh, people talk about a lot of homework or having to get up early and doing a lot mm -hmm. of work uh, as far as I'm concerned, it is what it is, and complaining about it really won't solve anything. Mm -hmm. The best thing to do is to embrace it, to improvise, to adapt, and overcome, which is what I teach our students. Because uh, with no excuse, we have to strive to be successful. So we're talking about back to school. Academically, you, you want to set in your mind, I want to do the best that I can to have academic success. Now, uh, I was not, when I was in school, I did not have the luxury to be a, a high A student. I was never on a roll. That was just not my, that was not my route when it came academically, you know, however, but I did create this discipline that I'm using now where I want to be successful and I strive for it. And I set it in my mind and life gets in the way. Life is tough. All these things come in. So you guys will be getting homework assignments there's gonna be times when you guys are not going to get all the sleep that you want there's gonna be times when you're not gonna have breakfast there's gonna be times when you're gonna forget to drink your water there's gonna be times when you forget your homework but you know what you have to have this mindset where it doesn't matter i'm going to be disciplined do the best that i can forget everything else and mm -hmm. uh, adapt improvise and overcome and so alexander with me saying all that what can you add to that to be uh, useful for other students I right, so um, I would say like with the homework and stuff, um, I wasn't the absolute best with that. Like I would definitely miss assignments and stuff, but um, I know how like friends and other people I know were really successful with that. And they gave me tips. I think I just had to definitely use them better. So like 
with homework, you get you get planners in school. And if you don't, that you could buy them anywhere. I would say definitely use that because I got into, and I know a lot of people do, I got into the habit of not using my planner and I didn't write it down. And then it leaves your mind. You have so many classes in a day or, you know, your activities and stuff. So then it's almost impossible to remember everything that you have to do and when it's due. So I would definitely say use your planner or use something at least to write it down. Like sometimes I'd write it on my arm. Don't do that. You need something permanent that you can look at later when you get home and say, oh, okay, I know all of my my things are here. And then put them into your calendar or type them in your notes, whatever it is, so that you know, like you can schedule things out, right? Like if you have a paper due on one day and you have homework due the next, you have a test, you can figure out, like usually they'll let you know ahead of time, whether it's only a couple days or weeks ahead, you can know what things you have to prioritize now. So you say, okay, on this night, I don't have to study for this yet because I still have a week or two, but I do have to do this because it's due tomorrow, right? So then you can figure out what you need to do and when so that you're not overwhelmed the night before, which a lot of us do procrastinate. You know that that you can push some things back farther than others and then still have enough time to do everything. So definitely write it down and know what you have to do because that can get really overwhelming really fast. And then there could be some days where you don't even, you wouldn't even remember what you had to do. And then you're in class and they ask, hey, where's your homework? Where's your paper? That's worth 50 points. And you definitely don't want that happening. You want to minimize that as much as possible, you know, missing your assignments and stuff. So I would say definitely write it down on paper, not your skin, not on like tiny little post-it notes. Put it somewhere where you know it's going to be all the time because that's you really know, important. You know what's funny is that now uh, you have a journal and you have a calendar. Yeah. You have yeah, a, I didn't you have a calendar and a journal that uh, like we went to, the, you, you know, you were in, we had a meeting this morning with Master Donato uh, mm-hmm. talking about this week's curriculum and September and what we're going to do to really help our students with back to school. And you were there with your schedule with, and you're writing a note yeah. now because it's yeah, now I write everything down. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> now I have it all. And now, now you're getting your assignments done and it's just the master yeah. Donato is just so, so he's so proud of you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It is different too. Cause in school, like your grade relies on it, but when it's for your job, when it's for work, you can't say, Oh, I forgot my assignment. Like that can only happen so many times. So your lives really depend on, on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's important. All right, let's 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 segue into what what students can do in the evenings in preparation for like we have students right now. Let's talk about um well kids, a lot of our youth in this community because we have an incredible community. Mount Laurel is the best. I love Mount Laurel, I love the schools, I love you know the, the community, the people, the families. Uh this great community has so many things that young people can do. From karate, martial arts to soccer, football, t-ball, base, all this stuff they can do, gymnastics, dance, they can do all this stuff. And so let's talk about some suggestions for uh, families that uh, right now back to school, you have this new schedule. You got to get up in the morning, you got to do what you got to do. You got to go to school, you got to do the homework assignments, and then let's say they have karate in the afternoon or whatever event in the afternoon. I know for our students, they have karate. So... Uh, I number one, I do not recommend you canceling those uh, classes out. They, uh, our students, our kids have to learn how to manage their time so that they can maximize their time. And so uh, I say, get up early, get what you have to get done to get ready for school, to to prepare, uh, to listen, and to take your notes to have a successful, let's say, school day. And then when you go home, have your homework assignments organize and do them right away efficiently correctly and some things maybe alexander will talk about some tips you can do to make sure you get your assignments done correctly and you make sure that that's done and then make sure you know whether you have an event that day or not whether it's karate dance gymnastics football and that you have x amount of time to get it done and that you do not cancel anything you you train yourself to work within uh, the schedule that you have allocated for yourself. So that's what I'm suggesting as a parent and as a martial arts instructor, you know, to those parents out there to help their kids. And so what would you say to that, Alexandra? So I know the summer's over now, but it just made me think of this. I thought it was really cool. This summer, more than ever, I saw parents keeping their kids like 
in camps and with like having to wake up early and stuff and still doing activities so that when they get back into school, it's almost the same thing just with school at it. So they're still used to waking up. They're still used to having to fit everything in. I thought that was pretty cool. So I feel like a lot of kids already have that with their sports and things like swimming and whatever else they were doing, like camps in the summer. So they're still used to that schedule, hopefully. But um, during the year, I would say since you know you're going to have school, you know you're going to have homework, and you know you have your activities and you can't just drop them because you have school. That's just not the way it works Um, because you still want to be able to do other things. I would say before, like once you get home from school, you're going to have a little bit of time, whether you have your activity like right after school or you have it later in the evening, schedule it out like the night before or the day before so that you know when you're going to be able to fit in your homework and when you're going to set your things out for the next day and then just plan ahead. So like if you know you have swimming or you have karate or you have soccer at like six o'clock on Monday after you have school, then do your homework before then, right? And then when you get home right away at seven or eight, you set out your clothes for the next day, you have your book bag out, you know where you have to go, like what classes you have, what homework you have done, and you just set it out. So the next day you just get up and you go. And then you do that every single day so you get in the habit of doing that and then just make sure you're caught up to date, like on your schedule. Like a lot of our kids will, um, not a lot, but some, they'll say, well, mom and dad didn't tell me this or mom and dad forgot this. But if it's yours, your, then you need to know. And if that's on mom and dad's schedule, then ask them, say, okay, what days do I have karate this week? Or what days do I have swimming this week? Find out so that you know you're not left in the dark. It's your schedule. And then you can plan from there and you could have help with that. You know, so I would just say know what you have to do and then fit it in around your schedule because there, there's there's almost zero chance that for all 24 hours in the day you're mm-hmm. doing something like you're going to have at least an hour or two before you go to bed and after school and stuff so that you can, you know, you can eat and set up your stuff for the next day and still have time to rest and do your activities and stuff. So Yeah, you that's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. You had me uh, remember something that Master Donato says uh, says often. And I heard this fir- first, I heard this from Master Donato. I'm sure he heard it from someone else. I think, I don't know. You'll have to ask Master Donato. But um, you, you were talking about responsibility being responsible Mm -hmm. for you it's your school your homework your assignments your day and you be responsible for that reminds me of when master now talks about the three r's respect responsibility and resourcefulness and so you just mentioned reminded me of those three r's with what you just said so thank you for that first of all Mm -hmm. you know when you take care of yourself getting up more uh, in the morning and making sure you're getting your stuff done you're showing a sign of self-respect you're respecting yourself and you're respecting what needs to get done in your life and then being responsible for yourself you're taking responsibility with no excuses it's on me because that gives you power that empowers you Mm -hmm. so that no one Uh, is responsible for what you need to get done for your education, for your health, for all, for your schedule, you're responsible. And then you, we all have the right to be resourceful. We have a team, we have the parents, the teachers, friends that we can use as resources to help us to be responsible as we respect ourselves. So when you were talking, all this was, I was thinking of being reminded of that. And so thank you so much for that, sweetie. That was awesome, yeah. that's great. And so um, I know we can go on. I think there's other things. What are some quick things that you can throw off, off of the top of your head that you throw at people that they have to be considerate as far as students be considerate too? I would say friends, like a lot of our students have been talking about that too. Cause we've been talking about going back to school and what are some tips that you can use and what are some things you should watch out for. And a lot of our students, especially as you get older, but even when you're younger too, are talking about the idea of friends and surrounding yourself with people who help you out. Because when you're in school, you're there five, five, yeah. You're there five days a week, six to seven hours a day, plus clubs and activities. You can be there for 10, 15 hours sometimes. And the kids you're and teachers that you're around there, you're around almost more than your family sometimes. And so if you surround yourself with, friends that you know support you and are fun to be with and give you good tips and help you out, then it's going to make you a better person. It's going to make school a lot less stressful. Once you get caught up in people who are putting you down or people who say they're your friends and they really aren't, 
or just people who are doing things that you don't agree with, you're making it a lot harder for yourself to get through school, especially middle school and high school, because it, it just makes it a lot more challenging. You don't need all of that stuff. And everybody always says this, but it's true because the people you're around at school, you're with them the most and they affect you the most. Mm -hmm. So just watch out for that. The, the kids you were friends with last year might not be your friends this year. People change. So it's your job to, you know, as you go to your classes and as you go to your activities, find people who are similar in ways that you like and like doing things you do and have similar views and stuff that you do. And then it just makes everything a lot easier when you have a good support system in school and at home. Now, let me let me ask you this. Uh, we had a couple of months ago, we had a conversation about smartphones. You remind me while you were talking about friends and all that, yeah. you reminded me of a conversation you and I had about the smartphone. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I know this is a powerful tool, but it's also a, 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 a could be a weapon that can be used for yeah. mass destruction <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. or, or, or for mass healing. But uh, yeah. speak to to our youth first. First of all, at, you're right now. You're going to be 19 years old. Yeah. Uh, okay. In in hindsight, from your experience now, uh, what age would you recommend uh, a parent give a child uh, give a child a smartphone? I know this this and again this is I know this is your opinion, but I'm curious. Mm -hmm. Um. I okay, I got mine when I was 13, so I was in eighth grade. And I know, give or take, most kids get theirs around that time 12, 13, some younger, some older. Like, my one friend had to wait till she was 18 and get her own, but I would say probably 14 or 15. I would say that when you're in high school, you kind of do need it for your activities and stuff, and when you're in school, like, not you know, like, yeah, I would say 14 or 15, and then even then, it's just it just, it can be a lot. Like looking back, everybody wants a phone. Like a lot of our students, they're like, oh, my mom and dad, they won't give me a phone until I'm older, until I'm like 15 or 16. And all your friends have it, so you want it. It's just a lot of stuff comes with that. It's a lot of fun with the social media and everything and being able to text your friends and play games. But it's a lot of unneeded stuff that happens. Well, you know, again, and it reminds me of the, the three R's again. And you, yeah self-respect you use it the right way then. yeah responsible yeah. and then just re be resourceful and getting tips but yeah. i appreciate you for, yeah. uh, for for sharing that so uh, uh we can go we can go we have a lot more tips that we can go but okay. you know i know we got to go through our day so everyone i want to thank my daughter for spending this time with us and and i'm sure parents out there teachers out there please share your tips and these are just a couple that we have uh, want to share with the community. And I just love hearing from my daughter and trying to get her on on here more often so she can share her wisdom yeah. because she's got a lot to bring to the table. She is a very wise mind for such a young age. And so, so I appreciate her being there. Plus, she's on the front lines of teaching kids. She's been doing it. I, she started teaching, I think, uh, um, helping me out at 10, in 10th grade, I think it was. Yeah. You went 10th yeah. grade. And so she's, she's got a lot of uh, experience teaching three and a half year olds, which is we start that age at DKC. So it's, it's an honor to have her on here and share her wisdom because and, and, she's wise at such a young age and very proud of her. But uh, um, if you have anything you want to add to the list, the back to school, I'm sure everyone has something. Please do add to this conversation. But more importantly, I think what we need to do is just support our children, support our parents as our fellow parents and community members. And we all work together on this. And I have to go back that, yes, life is tough. Life can just come at you hard, fast and furious and ferociously. And it's tough. Work is tough because parents, we got to work. We got to do that. We have young people like Alexandra out in the workforce already. We have students. We have some of our instructors. Mr. McGill's back in school. He's got to work hard. Life is hard. Work is hard. School is hard. However, the, our idea as martial artists, which is what I focus on at our, with our program at Donato Karate Center, and Alexandra does the same thing, we need to not complain but get tougher. And whatever is hard, we need to get harder. So that means train hard and have a disciplined mindset. So be disciplined. Do what we have to do. Do what you have to do, regardless of how you feel. So that's my last word. Alexander, give your last word. Um, I don't have a, 
for all our kids and stuff and kids in college have a great day and a great week and great school year and just stay smart and use the tips that we give to you and everybody else and just use your common sense and have fun i love it yeah let's give each other high fives oh can we hold on i had to hold up my hand all right there we go oh no that's wrong it's wrong high five what oh Okay. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Everything's flipped. Bye, everyone. Bye. Have a great day. See you on the mats.